What's up, cooks? We have something amazing in the kitchen today. We have the GE Profile Stand Mixer. This is, I believe, the first smart mixer that uses voice commands. It has a built-in scale. It has an app. We're bringing smart technology into the stand mixer world, right? We're going to give this our first look today. We're going to be doing a whole series on this mixer. We're giving our first look today. This is the GE Profile Smart Mixer with AutoSense technology. Welcome to the Amy Learns to Cook Kitchen. So GE rolled out this mixer maybe about a year and a half ago, I think. They dropped it at a bunch of houseware shows and everybody went crazy over this mixer. It came out at over a thousand dollars. And at the time I was like, I want to try that mixer, right? But I wasn't going to shell out a thousand dollars for it. So I was like, it has to be further down on my list, right? Um, but I happened to get it on a pretty good sale, so I went for it, right? Um, so just before we even start digging into this mixer, I just want to tell you that I have not jumped on the smart feature bandwagon when it comes to small appliances like this. I've used a few and they're fun. If you're kind of a techie type person, they're driven by an app. But sometimes I feel like those things are, they get in the way from me as a relatively intermediate level home cook. You know, some of these things like automatically turn on and you can turn the mixer on and off with your phone and all this stuff. When I'm cooking, I'm not on my phone and handling food because my phone gets laid down places that I don't want to touch my food. So I haven't been like this jump on the bandwagon with these smart features because a stand mixer is really something that's pretty simple, right? It's on and off. And so I'm one of these people, I want to tell you from the beginning that I am a hard sell when it comes to integrating an app and controlling a stand mixer with a phone. I am on board with an app that has recipes that I can take that recipe and then use the mixer and make it. I think that's a great companion to the stand mixer. I don't know why some of these other big stand mixer companies have not got on the board with that yet. Yeah, so one of my things is with necessarily just having it on a phone app is Sometimes I want to print out the recipe so I can gather all the ingredients. I don't want to have to go back to my phone, like I said, and touch my phone when I'm dealing with food. And I'm just at, I'm at a weird state with this. I said, I'm like, I don't, I like the idea of some things having some of these smart features, but I think when it makes sense, right? So... <laughs> The way I'm go, I, I feel like we need to dive into this mixer because there's so much in, in this mixer. I'm going to do a little bit of a series. It's going to be maybe four videos, five videos. I don't know quite yet. Could be seven videos. And when all those videos are done, I will be releasing them as I do them. But when they're done, I'll create a big playlist covering the GE Smart Mixer so you can watch all those and you can see is this a mixer that would be good for the home cook, right? Um, so we're going to start today. We're going to get our first look at this mixer. We're going to touch on a little things because I don't know everything what this mixer does. We're going to touch on everything. We're going to get it out of the box. We're going to touch it. We're going to feel it. We're going to see what's up with it. Uh, you know, in the basics, but we're also going to be doing a standard Amy Learns to Cook test and review on it. So we're going to do our traditional, you know, whipping cream, making cookies and doing dough, because I feel like if this 
this is only driven by the smart features and I can't just come to it and turn it on, um, I'm not going to be happy about that. So even if you're not a smart feature kind of cook, but it turns out to be a great mixer that you can use as a traditional mixer without all those functions, you know, I want to find that out. So we're going to do a traditional Amy Learns to Cook review on this, but we're also going to be busting out the app. We're going to be using some of the smart features in some videos, and I'm going to be doing some recipes in the app, in this mixer to see what it see what those bring to the table, right? So in other words, we might be doing more of a manual, typical test review, yeah. but then at a later time, we're going to we'll be, be doing the smart. We'll be, we'll be doing the smart slash automation that it has. Because one thing that's interesting, I don't know all the features. I know this thing has a built-in scale. It has an app, and I believe the app talks to the mixer and tells you when to put things in. It has, it has a built-in scale, which I'm... I'm a little, I don't know how I feel about that yet. My initial thing is a built-in scale is kind of weird because if you over pour, now that is in there and how do you get it back out, right? You have to be really careful when using that. I do like that feature because I can go straight from my storage container into the mixer without having a pre-measure and I have all these other dirty dishes, um, but... I'm taking it with a bit of skepticism. But this thing has sensors and it can help you. So it has something called AutoSense technology. And that means that it feels the resistance that's going on in the mixer and shuts it off when it thinks it's done. So one example of that, and I think is pretty interesting, is like meringues or whipped cream. Because you can set it and say, I want stiff peaks on my whipped cream or stiff stiff peaks on my meringue or soft, soft peaks and you could just set it to that and the mixer knows the resistance that's going on in there and it knows when to stop to give you that result so we're going to see if that actually works but also creating your butter yeah it can make butter too so it knows when it has turned into butter so you can put your cream in there turn it on say butter and it knows based on the resistance on the paddle uh, that it's done and it'll shut off at that point. I think what I was talking about was, was the creaming of your butter. So in other words, when you put the sugar in. Cream. Yeah, creaming too of the butter. It'll make butter and cream your butter and sugar. It also has some interesting how it, uh, you put the attachments on. So when you're putting the paddle, normally you have to spring it up and turn. This just has a clip thing. So you just clip it in there and it goes on a lot easier. Um, and another thing that's interesting is this hub here. Tags, KitchenAid. Ding, ding, ding. We're going to have to test that, right, Bobo? <laughs> so it has a built-in scale. It has AutoSense technology. Uh, monitors the changes in viscosity through the torque to maximize whipping emulsifying. And you just set start and it does it for you. Um, it has a DC motor and it has an ultra high speed. So the top speed is faster than most other mixers. Um, it is a seven quart mixer. Well, yeah, you need seven quarts. Well, why would you ever want to buy a five quart, right, Boo Boo? Well, yeah. <laughs> we want double and triple batches, right? Well, I don't know. It depends on... Don't you want to lock it? I guess. I do. <laughs> uh, right. Okay, this is going to be a little bit to get this out. So I think the best thing is to put this thing on its side. Which is my first criticism of it. So when this arrived, it was in a box. It was in this box. It was in this box. And the mixer was on its side in that box. That's how they ship it. And one thing I can tell you about your stand mixer, don't store it 
or have it on its side because all the gear grease is up in the head of the mixer. And then when you have it on the side, the grease goes to the side and it could spill out, leak out. Then the grease isn't on the other side of the mixer. Don't do that. I don't know why GE um, packaged it that way, but it should not be on its side ever, right? So when you get one of these things, you will notice that. Get it upright immediately when you get it. Do not allow your mixer to go on the side. Of course, I got to do that to even get it out of the box, but don't store it on its side. Don't do any of that. a heavy mixer. I think the, it weighed 50 some pounds in that big box. Whoa. Yeah. This is a big one. So let me get this off of here before it goes kaboom. You got the shipping tape so you might want to cut it if you have to. Bunch of blue tape and stuff together. No. Whoa. Okay. So my first reaction is it's a little squattier than I thought it was. Um. Okay. Let's see. How do I get this off? So first up, I'm not a huge fan of pouring shields, and I think with all the research and development that went into this mixer and the price, this is not a great pouring shield. Um, I don't know. They should have come up with something that revolutionized the pouring shield situation. Well, yeah. Because at this price range, I kind of want to see something different than what everybody else is doing. If they would have, oh, not that great. I'm definitely going to stay with my beater. Okay, so the bowl. Um, very nicely polished bowl, very nice handle here on this bowl. Um, this is probably one of the nicer handles that I've seen on a bowl. The bowl is, it's nice. It's not a showstopper, but it's nice. But it, it has the same, like on This has a different kind of lift on it. Um, then what, okay, so here is the whisk. Which is Stainless all, steel whisk. It's kind of rectangular. There's bigger hole in here. But it's rectangular. Um, it's stainless steel. It's not like as heavy or as nice as I've seen on some recent mixers that I've used. Um, here's the dough hook. Has a spiral hook. 
Um, How's the weight on it? Nice. Okay, so first up, the att attachments, uh, accessories. Um, they are uh, fully stainless steel. They're interesting. We're going to see how those go on because it does have an interesting way to put these on here because it has this big thing. Um, at like over a thousand dollars, I would expect these to be stainless steel. I don't, it's a great fix. It's a great feature. And when I see it on a three, four hundred dollar mixer, I'm like, wow, unbelievable, uh, stainless steel parts at this price point. They better be stainless steel because if they're not, that's an issue, right? <laughs> so it's a great feature, but at this price level, it is, it should be a given, right? Um, we have our manual here. And we have some kind of warranty thing. So I just said this to Eric. This is 20% off of King Arthur baking. Thank you, thank you. So I just said this to Eric. When I opened my Kenwood, it had a nice, beautiful manual. And he said something like, well, that's a cooking mixer, so it's going to be, the manual's going to be more, um, thicker. There's more thicker. Stuff. This is a smart mixer. It has tons of different features. And I really think at the thousand dollar price level, these are decent manuals, but they really should have had a manual with this mixer at over a thousand dollars. Well, there's your pretty one. Yeah, this is, you know, with three recipes in there. I know the recipes are on the app, right? But you know, when I'm buying a luxury appliance and yeah, you're going to say over a thousand dollars, you're buying a commercial appliance. They're well over that, but this is a luxury home appliance. And I really would like to see luxury documentation. And that is not what this is. I think, I mean, with this, this is all in, this is all in other languages. So with our manual, this is the manual we're getting with this smart mixer, this front part of this. That's all we're getting. GE, you failed on the manual. <laughs> you failed on the manual. Quick start guide. Okay, there's a quick start guide. But the problem is with the quick start guide, well, this is only what they give you. Because they want you to go to the QR code, probably take them out to the website, and that's where it's all at. Give me a nice manual for a luxury appliance. I should have a luxury manual. I shouldn't just have one of these little throwaway things, right? GE failed on that. I'm giving them a fail, sorry. Amy gave them a fail. Um, you might be wondering if this will fit under your cabinet. This is 17 and a half inches tall, so it's not a huge mixer. One of the things I see on that is it's kind of, it's a really heavy, substantial machine, but it still has the feeling of small. The mixer head on it is small. It's dense, so it's heavy, but kind of small. It's heavy and dense. Yeah. Um, so it has this strange way of putting on the bowl and <laughs> okay that's your release levers <laughs> um so we're gonna put the bowl on here it's a little bit like KitchenAid in the sense that you got the things on the sides and the thing in the back the bowl lift is different though that's groovy what do you think about that Look at it. The only other way it's different is the wolf. The wolf, you spin it on. This yeah, thing. the wolf, you spin it on. The KitchenAid, at times, it's difficult to get the bowl on and off, especially with, like, the Commercial 8. This seems like this part goes on easier. Like, you're putting it on here, and it's easier. How's it get into you Also. And the guy in the back was easy to snap in? Yeah. Okay. I, I 
could see, you know, if I'm like, if I have some kind of, I don't know, dexterity issues, or if I have strength issues, would I like that? You're just pushing strength down the hill. Is that very hard? Oops. You do got to make sure that it it's level on their little prong looking things, because the last time I watched that. Yep, oh, you do have to push it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, looks pretty. That's interesting. I don't. I'm not a hundred percent sure how I feel about that. Yeah, you get used to it. <laughs> so, how you lower the bowl like this? Like, if I'm mixing something and I want to lower the bowl, I just lowered it, and now you just raised it. He doesn't go up and down as much as on the Can I do it one-handed? Barely. If I'm sitting up here and I have one dirty hand and I'm used to a, a raising and lowering a level, you're used a to thing, you're do used I want to, to do this one-handed? You're, you're used to one hand with a lever. Now, in all fairness, this is going to face the average person. You're not going to cook sideways. Yeah. So here's our... Why don't you lower it? Make it easier. Oh. Lower the ball and make it easier. This goes on and it supposedly just goes up straight up. Okay, we just moved this mixer over and let me tell you, it has this kind of small profile to it, but it is heavy it as is. a rock. It was like, like 50 pounds. Yes, this is not a move it around kind of mixer. This is heavy, which hopefully will result in no rocking and moving when we use it. Hopefully. Um, Eric said that I, I don't know, did these set me off in a bad mood? <laughs> yeah. So here is, I wanted to get a closer shot of this and how this works. So to release it, you just push it down and it releases. But as you see, this here has a shape to it. So to get it back in there, you have to kind of line it up where it goes and you just push it and it goes on. It works like a quick disconnect. If you have an idea how quick yeah. those works, this is it. So off and on. Um, I mean, sometimes, I don't know. It's not until I use it that I'm going to know if I like it. Because if I have it off, it won't go. You have to have it in a notch and it'll go up. I like the idea of rethinking what we know about certain features of a stand mixer and giving us something different than what everybody else gives us. I like that. Mm -hmm. um, do I like this thing? It's different. It's different. I actually, oh gosh. <laughs> I, I do like what Wolf did. I kind of like that turning thing. Um, I do like seeing things different than what we just get out of every other machine. What I'd almost recommend, Boo Boo, is you know the feet that we put on that, um, the water? Yeah, but I don't want it moving around. Well, I'm using it. You don't, but... I don't want it to... But if you want to slide it, that'd be a good way. Yeah. Okay. Let me plug this in and let's get our first... Uh, first experience of the sound. <laughs> okay, so this thing has this very interesting... Um, way of turning it on and off. It's not like your typical lever. It's actually the top of the mixer. Um, we're going to be going over a lot of the other features in another video about how this works, how the smart feature works and all that with that. But just know to turn this on. No, I think you, did you just go reverse? I turned it off. Yeah. <laughs> so it says ready here. So the first button is how you pair it to your phone. So it's not going to start up on that first button. The second button is stir. And it definitely has a slow start to it. And it starts out fairly quiet. Two. Now, 
Now, are you feeling any clicks, or is it all variable? I feel little clicks, but at some point you don't feel clicks, right? I think you lose the clicks. It... I don't know. I don't think, like, the gears are super refined. Listen to the head with your ears. The planking is the quick disconnect and everything. It's not secure. It's not yeah, I think it rattles around a little bit. It's the attachment that you know. I can tell you it's it's kind of hard going from the Zachary, which I have been using lately, to something that is not because that's a very quiet mixer. And now I'm back to, wow, this thing is really rattly, right? So you're on a stage seven, of course. Seven, yeah, it says seven here. It's a loud one. I don't know if you're going to mix cookies with that paddle and a stick. It's fast. Oh, it's going to be a faster. It almost rattles the whole counter. Well, this is going to be something pounds, and it's going to start shaking in a minute. Ten. Eleven. Now it's going to ramp up. Jeez! No way! Yeah. yeah. It shakes a bit. I don't think it's going to go into that. Whoa, someone in the Facebook group said that the high speed like goes off like a rocket. Maybe when it's whipping cream and stuff, that's a good thing. <laughs> It'll be done in 20 seconds. I don't know. Do you need it to go that high? Oh, I don't know. I don't need my cookie paddle to be flinging across the room, that's for sure. It does have this scale here. It has a scale and a timer. I don't know. You can play with those and then the display is right there. I don't know. So what you do is you hit the button. In the middle? Oh. So you're playing with the scale right now, apparently. So, which one is the timer? Oh, it says timer. Yeah, you go back and forth between And it the two. says ready, mm -hmm. scale. And then. Yeah. And you can play with the timer. And it's in gram, so. Some people, like, have this really bad attitude about using grams, and I like to use So, plug like the timer. That. Hit the timer button. And then use the left and right to. Now, now start, start your little, start your little, grab the little hook thingy. What hook? The, the, the button here. Just turn on your uh, mixer. Go ahead, get up on two or three. Yeah, I see. Yeah. I don't know what these left right things are. They give you choices. <laughs> so you can go into setup. It'll tell you your model, your setting, system. scale, okay. You got things, yeah. So this is our very first look at this mixer. I have to figure out how to use the thing. I downloaded the app and I had a little bit of trouble getting it to pair with, I did get it to pair with it, but it took me like three or four times to create the account, to try to pair with it. It didn't send me an email to verify it, um, but I eventually got that to happen. So I'm gonna play around with the app my initial thought of it is it's a little clunky. That's all I got to say. Um, yeah, so our very first look at the GE Profile Smart Mixer. Um, the next we're going to do is a basic, um, Amy Learns to Cook, basic non-tech uh, review of it. Then we'll move into the tech side. So I hope you join me for this journey that we're going to have with this new mixer. Um, it's going to be interesting. Yeah.